The new Ben-Hur movie has been in the theaters. Have you seen it, and did you see the Charlton Heston version? Has Hollywood ever made really good religious movies? Are they capable of doing so? Good question. I have not seen the, uh, the new movie, which uh, I understand there was a bit of an argument. They were thinking of calling it Ben-Him, in wow. keeping with new, uh, you know, their current uh, uh, society. But uh, I did see the Charlton Heston version. I'll have you know Charlton Heston was standing there when I saw it. It was a, a, a re-release of it at the uh, Cinerama Dome about 20 years ago. Wow. So um, this is one of the two times I met Charlton Heston. And he was very impressive because he was Charlton Heston. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and not only was he Charlton Heston, it was Charlton Heston at the opening of a re-release of one of his most iconic films. So he was extremely Charlton Heston. <laughs> Whether or not he would have behaved in quite the same manner at the opening of The Omega Man, I don't know. But at any rate, uh, yeah, I saw it, and, you know, I'll tell you honestly, my father would never let us see religious movies. You saw what, the new one or the, the old, old one? one? Oh, the old, the old one. one, okay. My father would never allow us to see religious, biblically-themed movies because he felt that it would cheapen the whole thing in our heads. He didn't believe that Hollywood was capable of doing it justice. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, that there's certainly a, a certain amount of truth to that, but it has several different reasons for being. Part of it is because of the lack of uh, lack of sympathy that a lot of secular-minded people have with, um, and, a lot, and a lot of folk in the industry are secular-minded, to say the least, that they have with these things. Uh, if you get the chance, uh, go see the Coen Brothers uh, picture, Hail Caesar in which they really, uh, they really have some fun with the whole idea. But I mean, you see things like the Silver Chalice and the Robe and all that, and they're shot through with theological problems. And yet, if you see them when you're young enough, that'll be fixed in your head as the way it worked. Um, I remember the story Ray Bradbury told. Uh, he did the uh, uh, script of the remake of King of Kings. And the, uh, the studio were very upset about the Judas character, and they wanted to get rid of him because they were afraid that it would make, um, make for uh, uh, anti-Semitism. And Ray Bradbury said, look, the people are going to be seeing this thing, know their Bible, and if there's no Judas in it, and it's produced by a man with a name like yours, that's going to cause far more anti-Semitism <laughs> than his presence could. So Judas appears in uh, the King of Kings, thanks to Ray Bradbury. Um, but it, 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 it so it's very, that, that, that's one aspect. The second aspect is that there are certain things that probably should never be made in the movies. Okay. And the reason for this is that when you make something into a film, you freeze it. The person's imagination. Yeah. I, I mean, I always tell people if you're going to see the Lord of the Rings movies, read the book first. Uh, now, if you do that, then you have to fight against being disappointed in the film because the movie in your head will never be the movie on the screen. I don't care how good it is, how bad it is. More than that, though, I think Jackson, like any filmmaker, in some ways misreads the, the material. And if you run around with that movie in your head as Lord of the Rings, you've really lost out. Yeah. So part of it is ideological, but part of it is purely a question of style, of, of artistry. Um, I mean, obviously if I did a version of The Headless Horseman, say, it would be quite different from someone else's. Uh, and how many people who haven't read Washington Irving, or even the Classics Illustrated version, have the Disney uh, cartoon in their head when they think of The Headless Horseman? Or Tim Burton's. Or Tim Burton's, absolutely. Which, oddly enough, uh, Tim Burton's is very effective, I mean. Yeah. As a film. Yeah. Uh, but it, uh, there, there was one that came out in the 70s, a cartoon version. Mm. It's quite good and has uh, some of the most beautiful backgrounds you'll ever see. The Headless Horseman was such an autumnal tale while we're on the subject of the Halloween season. Ah, uh, yes. It's, uh, it's good stuff. Good stuff. I, was just, uh, I was just back there and uh, walked over the bridge on the site of where uh, Ichabod Crane wow. is uh, supposed to ride. Wow. It's, it's a wonderful part of the world.
Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Suffice to say that uh, the problem with religious pictures is that even if you have faith, you can never really do it complete justice. Mel Gibson did a wonderful job, I think, with the passion. But there will always be people who have problems with it for good reason. Mm -hmm. And one thing you can be assured of is that it didn't happen quite like that. Okay. I mean, it's, don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's very effective. I, I know, especially, you know, with Protestants, because they're not used to thinking about the passion. Most Catholics, I knew, though, were busy ticking off in their heads the Stations of the Cross and the uh, Five uh, yeah. Sorrowful Mysteries. Yeah. You know, which, which I did. Yeah. Um, and that, that didn't lessen the effect for me at all. But, I mean, I've done this. You know, my whole life I've spent reliving the passion that way. Mm -hmm. And he did a really good job. His devil was very effective. But, again, the problem is it fixes in your mind that these things, that this way that he portrays it is how it was. His devil, I think, is an extremely effective devil because it's so just wrong. Right. Just totally, absolutely wrong. And that little demon child, you know, who I think I went to school with, actually. Um, maybe dated, I don't know. Anyway, the point is, um, that, that it was very, very effective filmmaking, and it did, it did, it respected the material. But that's not, it couldn't have been quite like that. And that's always the problem with, with a sacred story that... Uh, uh, you'll fix someone else's idea in your head. Well, that sounds like then, I mean, that has broader application then, because so in any historical sort of movie, I mean, it will never happen exactly no, like that. No, it, it was never like that. The difference, of course, is that with regular history, it suffices to get an idea. But with sacred questions, uh, the, the, the stakes are higher. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, the stakes are higher for the individual. I mean, if I identify Christ with what I saw in the robe with the silver chalice, <clears throat> what what about what about something not necessarily biblical but Catholic? Let's let's talk about the Song of Bernadette and one of my favorites, A Man for All Seasons. Well, that those are uh, that is a bit different when you when you take the divine out of it. Yeah. Then you're dealing with the human with overtones of the divine. Yeah. Uh, and again, you've got to be careful not to make it hokey. I mean, if you remember at the end of the omen, omen three or whatever it is, when Jesus descends. Okay. It, it believe me, the phrase "jump the shark" was invented, <laughs> invented for that particular <laughs> moment. But uh, you know, having having said that, "Man for All Seasons," for instance. Um, there, I, I've seen two versions, the, the regular one and Charlton Heston's version, both very good, very effective, uh, and very real. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite line in that is the everyman character, sort of like a Greek chorus at the end, you know, he's, he's the steward for uh, Thomas More, he's a messenger, he keeps on showing up, but it's the same man. And then at the very end, he says, he goes through the long list of how the different people died horribly. Yeah. And then he ends up saying, and me? Oh, I died in my bed, as I hope shall all of you. Meaning, and this is true, that we're likely to be like him. Yeah. Than any of the characters in the film. Yeah. In other words, instead of being a great saint like Thomas More, or an evil man like Thomas Cromwell, we're lukewarm. Yeah. You know, the kind that gets spit out, spat out, like that. Yeah. Anyway, but that's... That, uh, so that can be quite effective, but the problem is the minute you try to put the camera directly on the divine, it gets difficult. Yeah.